I, uh, I was in the U.S. Navy. I was a junior officer during the Vietnam War, and I served on a, a, a ship that's called a destroyer. Um, it's essentially, in the Navy's parlance, it's a small combatant. And uh, I also, uh, that ship spent six months uh, off the waters of Vietnam doing various tasks, and then I returned for a year uh, in a uh, planning and support capacity on the land in Vietnam. And it took up about three and a half years of my life. So I also said, told uh, the coordinators, I'm here representing my brother. We're both actually uh, graduates of Belmont High School. And yes, there was a Belmont High School back when I was in high school. And uh, I got out in 1962, he got out in 1965. And he was a US Navy SEAL. I volunteered. Um, however, I went to, in during a period of time in uh, 1966 when uh, conscription, the draft, was a reality for young men of my age. And uh, I uh, competed for a spot in the Navy Officer Candidate School, and fortunately I was successful and, and uh, went to Navy OCS in the summer of 1966. To be honest, I didn't want to be in the Army or the Marines. Uh, my eyes precluded being a pilot, so the Navy seemed like a reasonable thing. And uh, I'd always liked the ocean. I mean, some of my uh, reasons for, for going in besides doing my military service were it appeared to be a more interesting branch of the service for me. All right, my last duty station was in uh, uh, Saigon, Vietnam. It's now called Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And I flew out of Vietnam in uh, October of 1969, and I was released from active duty approximately three or four weeks later in San Francisco at the Naval Station. And then I took my time traveling across the country to get back to Boston, which is my hometown. Well, Belmont's my hometown. So that's how I got home. Okay, when I was on the ship, we didn't really physically land in Vietnam. We were off the coast doing a variety of activities, which I can get into later on if you would like. Uh, but I did have a chance to actually, uh, the ship would anchor in a harbor occasionally, and, and I actually did go ashore. So the first time I went ashore in a, uh, uh, the, uh, the destroyers, uh, they called it a captain's gig. It was actually a powerboat. And I walked around the dock and that was it. When I came back for my full year, um, I spent the first six months in Saigon. Saigon was, had gone through uh, what is referred to as the 1968 Tet Offensive, about six or seven months before I got there, but that was over with. And uh, while there was always a threat that it might reoccur in some fashion, uh, fortunately it didn't while I was there. So it was a, it was a crowded city. Um, there were refugees there. Uh, but the American military personnel were uh, pretty well housed and well treated. I was initially uh, what's called an ensign. In the Navy, that's the equivalent of a second lieutenant. In the Army, you may be more familiar with that type of, or the Marines. And I was called the first, I was the first lieutenant tenant and the gunnery, one of the gunnery liaison officers. And one of our roles when we were off the coast of Vietnam was to uh, help pick up down pilots who, uh, had, who were shot down. We actually didn't do it, a helicopter did it that was on another destroyer, destroyer, but we were sort of a, a team, if you wish. And then we also uh, had gunfire, what are called gunfire support duties, and that's where my job as the gunnery liaison officer came in. No email, no cell phones. <laughs> Sometimes we felt like we were sending up flares. It was basically through letters. Although, uh, in one instance, we had, uh, rest and recreation opportunity in Hong Kong. And I 
actually called my parents from Hong Kong. It was a big deal back then. And I woke them up about 3 or 4 in the morning, and I startled them. I mean, they weren't expecting it. I couldn't tell them ahead of time. But except for that one phone call, we communicated via letters. I actually got a, Chris, a Christmas card, I like to boast about this, from uh, President Johnson when he was in the uh, White House. And the reason I did that, I knew that anybody in the, in the military service that sent the White House a Christmas card would get one back. And I did. I still got it, too. Combat comes in different forms. Um, on the ship, uh, the gunfire support mission would, would uh, qualify as combat, and, uh, but we were more in an offensive rather than defensive capacity. Although I must say, we were there with uh, three or four other destroyers, and at least two of those ships were hit by enemy gunfire, and unfortunately, one of the shipmates on the ship, one of the ships was killed. So yes, I, I was under that threat. Fortunately, my ship was never hit. It was uh, exclusively in an offensive capacity. Let me focus on what, what happened when the ship was over in the Vietnam area, which was for six months, and also what I did when I was there afterwards for a year. The idea was to go someplace very exotic and very pleasant. Uh, so uh, the ship wound up visiting Hong Kong, Taiwan. We visited the Philippines a lot because the US Navy used to have a supply base there, and then also Japan. But in the process of coming and going, uh, we stopped in Hawaii, we stopped in San Diego, we went through the Panama Canal, which, by the way, if you ever have the chance to do that, do it. It's fascinating. And in those places, we basically uh, hung out with our uh, friends on the ship, visited points of interest, had something to drink and eat. Uh, and then uh, when I was there on the, the land, I also uh, went to Hong Kong and Bangkok. So I got to visit a lot of uh, the cities over there in East, Far East Asia. That's actually one of the, the, perhaps the most positive things about the military is that you really do bond. And I made a number of uh, friendships with uh, fellow officers for the most part on the ship. Uh, some of them I've kept up, but unfortunately most of them over a period of in my case, close to 50 years, you know, sort of uh, unfortunately uh, go by the wayside. But I do have a funny story that I would like to tell. Um, I was in charge of about 35 young men who were the deck force on this destroyer. That meant they had the dirtiest, grimer, most grimy jobs of painting, washing, keeping the ship's uh, outward decks, you know, uh, in good shape. Um, and so there were a number of, I had 19, 20 year olds sort of under my, my supervision. And years later when I got out of the Navy, uh, I went through an MBA program at MIT. And during the first two years of the orientation, you know, I kept looking at this guy across the way. Boy, I, I really recognized his face, but I couldn't place him. And I thought I had placed him, but I had placed him incorrectly. And then once when, when we were standing next to each other, and I don't know, the second day, he looked up at me and he said, uh, you don't remember me, do you? And when you get that sort of inquiry, you sort of say, oh my Lord, what's coming? He said, my name is John so-and-so, and I was in your division on the USS New. That was my ship. And I went, oh my Lord, <laughs> you knew me back when I was a green ensign. And we became good friends in business school. Um, unbeknownst to each other, we didn't know we were applying to the same business school. We were going to go there. But we uh, ran into each other about, oh, it was about eight years after uh, we were on the ship together. Uh, as you may know from studying history for, during that period of time, uh, the Vietnam War was a very unpopular war. And a lot of the blame, in my mind, mistakenly, was put on the shoulders of the, the privates, the sergeants, the lieutenants, if you wish, who were in the field. 
So consequently, you really didn't talk about it that much, and I didn't talk about it, never denied it. You know, I, I felt that my duty was uh, fine and honorable, uh, but you didn't brag about it either. I mean, for today, uh, you know, people are congratulated for the military service. I even had a young man, uh, a sophomore, I believe, come up to me, and he sort of knew why I was here. This happened about a half an hour ago, and he said, you a veteran? I said, yeah. He said, thank you for your service. And that was really nice. It was really nice. I really appreciated that. So you, uh, there weren't any parades for us when we came back. It didn't bother me that much, but uh, disappointed me somewhat. The war officially ended for us in 1973. It ended for the South Vietnamese in 1975. In 1973, I was living and working in California, in a place called Menlo Park, California. I was working as a management consultant. And then in 1975, I was back here in the Boston area. I actually got my naval commission before I was 22, and I was off active duty before I was 25. So I was in and out over a period of three and a half years, and it was very early in the, in the Vietnam conflict. All right, <clears throat> you have to put into context, all right, that when I was on the destroyer, it was from 1966 to 1968, all right? The Vietnam War was at its very early stages, and the political unrest really didn't occur until late 1968 into 1969. Uh, I would say the political aspects of the war weren't discussed. I mean, once you're in the service and you're doing things, your, your concentration is more uh, immediate to the people you're doing it with and what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, people look out for each other, and that's a very good trait, and there really isn't in my opinion, there isn't a lot of time spent discussing the political correctness of the war. And at that point in time, 66 to 68, uh, that was probably true in general. When you got to 1969, 1970, 1971, uh, the mood was ch certainly changing both within the military and, and outside. Um, so I would say there wasn't a lot of discussion about the uh, political aspects of the war, but more what's our mission going to be and how are we going to get back from that in one piece. I wish more people your age had opportunities to serve their country, not just in the military, but uh, in services like the Peace Corps, the Domestic Peace Corps, um, just volunteering your time, you know, because I found that even though uh, my time in the military wasn't completely comfortable by any means, I'm rather proud of the fact that I was able to really donate about three and a half years of my life to uh, a purpose other than my own uh, advancement, okay? And I want to make sure that future generations realize that uh, if the United States is going to go to war, then they better be sure that it's a war that the country approves of. And at the very least, our representatives in Congress are all in agreement about it. Right? That wasn't necessarily true for Vietnam.